Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner's Code, a place for you to keep up to date with my journey as I dive deeper into the coding world. Before I start, if you haven't yet, please check out my new website that went live this week, including my first blog, Welcome to Beginner's Code. You can also look at my posts on Instagram that go into detail about the basics of Python, or if you're looking for source code for some projects, then by all means, check out my GitHub, where there are almost 70 projects that you can explore. The links for these will all be in the description below, so please do check them out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos from me as I teach you through the basics of Python. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing today is downloading Python onto our machine. If you head over to the official website, which is www.python.org, I'll put all the links for these in the descriptions below, um, and then head over to Downloads, it will show the most recent version which your machine can hold. For me, I'm on a Mac, so I will be clicking Download Python 3.9.1, and it will download this installer. Continue, just a couple of things that you need to do first. Continue. Okay, so now that I've started this installation, it might take a couple of minutes, so I will skip ahead in the video. See you in a second. Okay, so now this is done, you should be able to close this installation. Press keep if you'd like. Okay, so it has opened for me my documents with the folder of three, Python 3.9 and everything that comes inside of it. But if you click on applications and you scroll down, you should see Python 3.9 and everything there. So now that you've downloaded Python onto your machine, if you head back to the website and you go to the documentation tab, you can see here the first one is the docs, which are the official documentations provided by Python. If you head down to the third one, the beginner's guide, and you click on that, it will open up a new website, which will tell you a little bit more about Python, but also some useful websites and a cheat sheet that you can learn the basics from. Code Academy is extremely useful, however it does cost. Um, there is a vast amount of programming languages on there, including Python 2 and Python 3 that you can learn. Um, if you scroll down to see what you'll learn, it does give you an insight into different elements of Python that you, will, that you can go through, including dictionaries, classes and functions. Now, DataQuest is a lot more data science related and there is a free plan to start with, but as you progress, it does start to charge. Um, but if you scroll down, you can see that there is a lot more data science fundamentals, including pandas and numpy and data visualization. So the next one is solo learn, and this is one that I started off with right at the very beginning. It covers all the basic concepts all the way through to object oriented programming and regular expressions and solo learn is free. As you progress, there are different quizzes and tests that you can take to test your knowledge. And the final website I'm going to be talking about is W3Schools. This holds a lot of information about the majority of programming languages. But if you look here on the side to this navbar, there you can see all the different elements of Python. And if you click on one, it will tell you what you can use it for, what any problems that might occur, and even gives you some examples that you can test out yourself. So the links for all of these websites will be in the description below, so if you want to check them out, then please do. So the next main step is to find a text editor that suits you. I have three here. The first one is Sublime Text. Now, Sublime Text you can get for free. However, it is only for a probationary period, and then you do have to pay. The second text editor is Atom. Atom is extremely easy to get along with. It's very user-friendly, and I started off using it. However, the third and final text editor that I use almost every day is Visual Studio Code. It is extremely easy to get along with, with great UI, and it's very easy to download and install any packages that you may want to use to enhance your coding experience. Now, all of the links to these three text editors will be in the description below, but by all means, give them a look, see what's best for you, because some will work better than others. So the first thing that we're going to do is open Terminal, which can be found in your utilities on Mac or command line prompt if you are on Windows. And what we're going to do is just make sure that it has been installed properly. So what we do is type in Python and then dash dash version. 
And if it comes up here with Python 3.8 or 3.9, whichever you've installed, then you know it's the correct one. With Mac, it does come with Python 2. So if it is saying Python 2 when you have downloaded the latest version, then do check out Google because there are some useful blogs that will help you change that. What we will now do is type in Python and it will open an interactive shell that we can actually type our Python code into. So the first line of code we are going to write is a print function, which takes an opening parenthesis and a string. A string is enclosed by quote marks. So for this phrase, we will use hello world exclamation mark. And then if you press enter, this will print out exactly what you have enclosed within the print function. To exit this shell, we just type in exit, open and close parentheses and press enter and you are back into your terminal screen. You can also navigate to the folder in which Python downloaded to. And at the top here, there is an IDLE. If you open this, it will create an IDLE shell and you can use this exactly the same way as you did the terminal. And if you press enter after typing in the print function, it will return hello world. Now I'm going to show you how to do this with Visual Studio Code. So if you create a new file, and if we save this file to our desktop, and if we just call it hello underscore world dot py, it needs dot py as the extension for Terminal to know that it is a Python file. If we save this just to our desktop, and then if I type in print hello world and then save, I then bring up my terminal. And then if I cd, which means change directory into desktop, and then I type in python hello world.py, press enter, and it runs the, pr the program. If you liked what we've been through today and you want to see more, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date. Next time, I will be showing you three different ways to code the same program. If there's anything you'd like me to cover, then please drop a comment below or reach out to me on Instagram or through my website. Thank you and see you next time.